merciful are the most beneficent and merciful. Here I am, Muhammad Jamal Khan, lecturer in Botany, University of Education, Lahore. Dear students, Assalamu Alaikum. Today, we will discuss a topic that related to our elective subject, that is microbiology. And the course code of this subject is BOTN4128. So this is lecture number seven. Here we have a index. So here we have the index of uh, these two type of microscopy. The first one is phase contrast microscopy that is uh, the type of light compound microscope and the second one is the differential interference contrast microscopy so in both these type we discuss their introduction then we view the history then we observe the basic principle or working principle of these two microscopy and then we observe their different types then we have the advantages of these two microscopy and in the end we will discuss the application of these two microscope so <clears throat> in this lecture we revealed some uh, attributes related to these two types of microscopy the first one is the type of light compound uh, microscope that is <coughs> phase contrast microscopy and the second one is the differential interference contrast microscopy <coughs> so first of all we have the introduction of these two microscope then we reveal the history of these two microscope then we will discuss the principle or the working principle of uh, these microscope then we have different types of these uh, two microscope in the end we discuss different advantages and types of these microscope so here we <coughs> take a start from uh, first uh, type that is phase contrast microscopy that is the type of light compound microscopy so <clears throat> uh, a phase contrast microscope is uh, one of the type of light microscope uh, but has a special condenser and objective lenses that uh, accentuate small differences in the refractive index of various structures within the organism and uh, <clears throat> as the light passing through objects of different uh, refractive indexes is slowed down and diffracted so the changes in the speed of light has been observed as different degrees of blindness as seen in the uh, figure later after this slide so the phase contrast microscopy help uh, to observe the live and unstained uh, specimen uh, because uh, most of the living organisms or microorganisms are difficult to examine uh, because they can't be stained by coloring them and dyes because stains usually kill the microorganism. So here we have the figure that is the output of uh, phase contrast microscopy and this figure indicates a microorganism that is amoeba. So now we have a brief history of phase contrast microscope. Uh, phase contrast microscopy first described uh, in 1934 by a Dutch physicist that uh, his name is Fred Zernike. 
uh, is a contrast uh, enhancing optical technique that can be utilized uh, to produce high contrast images uh, of transparent specimens such as living cells, microorganisms, skin tissues, uh, fibers, <coughs> subcellular particles and etc. So the Nike's development of phase contrast optical theory uh, is an example uh, of how research results from a highly specialized field uh, can yield innovative new developments in seemingly unrelated disciplines such as biology and medicine. So this uh, phase contrast technique is proved to be such an advancement in microscopy that the Nike was awarded a Nobel Prize in 1953. Uh, initially <coughs> Uh, Germany was first manufacturer to incorporate practical phase contrast optics into their microscopes and after convincing an extensive experiments with the Nike method uh, the immediate impact on biological research was uh, significant. So the application of uh, uh, this technique continues uh, to the present day. <coughs> and modern phase contrast objective designed and produced by Nikon and other optical manufacturers are capable of operating in combination with auxiliary contrast uh, enhancing techniques such as differential interference contrast or fluorescence and polarized light. So the, uh, these objectives are available with the internal phase plates and that have varying levels of absorption and phase displacement of uh, surround illumination to produce a wide spectrum of specimen contrast and uh, background intensity choices of phase contrast microscopy so here we have so basically uh, the principle of phase contrast microscopy is based on the nature of wave either the light wave or light rays is in phase or it is in out of phase so the fact that the light rays can be in phase it means their peaks and valleys match or if their peaks and valleys are not matched then the light rays are out of phase so this is the basic principle uh, of contrast so in uh, phase uh, uh, contrast microscopy we have uh, two uh, fundamental parameters one uh, set of light rays comes directly from the light source and the other set comes from the light that is reflected or diffracted from the particular structure in the specimen so when these two sets of light uh, rays <coughs> one is direct and the other one is reflected or diffracted, uh, diffracted rays are brought together they form an image of the specimen on the eyepiece or ocular lens so that containing areas that are <coughs> uh, relatively light in which uh, uh, both uh, the peaks and uh, valleys are are in uh, same phase or are parallel from each other so such type of uh, light we call it as in phase through shades of gray and to black out of phase as seen in the given below figure here we have the figure this one <coughs> so here in uh, this here uh, two ways in phase in which both the peaks and valleys have a same um, pattern but in this uh, two ways or out of phase these both uh, light one is directed light rays or the other one is diffracted or reflected eye rays they are not in phase their peaks and valleys are not in the same pattern so they are out of phase so due to this uh, where we have uh, two waves in phase we observe the bright image and where 
we have uh, two waves out of phase we have a dim or uh, darker image look at it okay so so uh, the two waves uh, in phase produce shades of gray while the two waves out of phase produce a black uh, background or ba black uh, <clears throat> vision so in phase two waves actually shows a, a constructive interference while the out phase uh, two waves show the destructive interference actually <clears throat> the thing uh, that i want to mention here is that here in this uh, contrast uh, phase uh, microscopy we use a very special condenser uh, this condenser basically uh, is form of form with a very special structure that uh, the condenser having annual rings and the objective lens also possess annual rings so the differences in phase are amplified uh, so that in phase light <coughs> appears brighter than out of phase light so the special uh, phase condenser consists of annular diaphragm on a rotating disc fitted to the bottom of the condenser so the working uh, of phase contrast microscope so <coughs> the phase contrast technique employs an optical mechanism to translate minus uh, minute uh, variation in phase into corresponding changes in amplitude so which can be visualized as uh, differences in image contrast so in this uh, figure that is a cutaway diagram of modern upright phase contrast microscope so including a schematic illustration of phase contrast optical frame so here we have a special phase condenser this one is the first special phase condenser that it consists of a annular diaphragm uh, on a rotating disc here we have a rotating disc so that is fitted uh, to the bottom of the condenser so as you observe here we have the uh, annular condenser this is the annular condensers and in addition to this we have the objective this also possess a annular rings so both the objective and condenser have annular rings so here we have two types of light rays one is direct light and the other one is the diffracted light so now we have the phase contrast microscope optical train uh, here we have a uh, illumination produced by a tungsten halogen lamp that is uh, directed through a collector lens here so uh, this light produced from lamp and entered through a collector lens and focused on a specialized annulus this one this one is a, a condenser annulus so it uh, positioned in a substage condenser so 
the substage condenser front towards a focal plane so this actually this is the assembly of uh, condenser so up here from this this indicates a focal uh, plane so the wave front passing through the annulus passing from this uh, assembly then illuminate the specimen from uh, passing through this assembly it enter to the, uh, the specimen from here and here after this and either pass through and deviate like here or here or are diffracted or retarded as in this pattern this one is that uh, this one is directed so after illuminating uh, the specimen the wave front either pass directly here this this is the way or this is the uh, undeviated or are direct diffracted and retarded as in this way this is the diffracted or refracted this uh, these are dotted line indicate diffracted or retarded uh, in phase so by structure and phase gradients present in the specimen so the diffraction and refraction depend upon the structure of specimen through which diffraction occur so the end deviated and uh, diffracted light collected by the objective so the this objective uh, is uh, now segregated the light at the rear focal plane by a phase plate this one is the fake uh, phase plate so this uh, objective segregated the light into two forms one this the second one is this so after segregation at the rear focal plane by this uh, phase plate and focus at the emit intermediate image plane to form the final image here to form the final image uh, contrast image observed in the eyepiece <clears throat> so uh, the addition of uh, phase contrast optical accessories to uh, standard bright uh, bright field microscope so that can be employed as a technique to render a contrast enhancing effect in transparent specimens that is significant of optical uh, staining as we observe in the figure in this slide so the light waves that are direct diffracted and shifted in phase by the specimen can be transformed by phase contrast into amplitude differences that are observable observable in the eyepieces so it means that uh, the large and extended specimens are also easily visualized with phase contrast optics or microscope due to the diffraction and the scattering phenomena that occur at the edges of these object or specimen so the performance of uh, modern phase contrast microscope is so refined that it enables specimen containing very small internal structure or even just a few protein molecule to be detected when the technology is coupled to in electronic enhancement and post acquisition image processing so here uh, i presented a figure number 2 that is the comparison of living cell in culture image in both bright field and phase contrast uh, illuminations so 
actually uh, these are the cells uh, human brain tissues grown in monolayer cultured bath with a nutrient uh, medium containing amino acids vitamins minerals salts and and fetal calf serum so the cellular attachment uh, become uh, disable as it does much of the internal structure so in addition the contrast range is dramatically improved as you seen in figure here this one is the structure that we observed from a bright field microscope so the in uh, bright field illumination the cells appear in semi transparent with only highly refractive regions so such as membrane nucleus and unattached cells but in case of uh, contrast phase when observed using phase contrast optical accessories the same field of review reveals significantly more detailed structure as we shown in uh, this uh, diagram so here we have two types of phase uh, contrast microscope one is upright microscope and other one is inverted microscope so the upright microscope uh, uh, are most common type of microscope and designed with the objective lens uh, positioned above the sample uh, looking downward and usually have a shorter working distance as observed in this diagram this one is a uh, upright microscope the next one is inverted microscope so this inverted microscope are more durable and easy to use for a uh, cell microscopy and tissue uh, culture working including diagnosis of tumor cells so the specialized long working distance phase contrast optical system have been developed for inverted uh, microscope as you observe in this figure so this one is a inverted microscope so here we have uh, advantage of uh, phase contrast microscope uh, actually uh, phase contrast is an uh, excellent method for enhancing the contrast of thin transparent specimen without loss of uh, air resolution and uh, And this technique uh, of phase contrast is widely applied in um, biological and medical research, uh, especially throughout the field of uh, histology. So, the, in this method, uh, the methodology is utilized to examine living uh, cells or tissue in a microorganism that are transparent under a bright field illumination. So, uh, phase contrast enables uh, internal cellular components such as membrane, nuclei, mitochondria, and mitotic operator and chromosomes and other tissues to be readily uh, visualized. So by this uh, phase contrast microscope, uh, high contrast image with high resolution uh, can be visualized and uh, this uh, microscope is ideal for studying and interpreting a very thin specimen that can can't be uh, visualized through a bright field microscope so actually this uh, uh, by the uh, interference or by the involvement of this uh, phase contrast microscope uh, the internal examination of any uh, cell or uh, specific structure uh, may be improved so uh, we can also use a phase, uh, phase contrast microscopy uh, with other means of observation such as inflorescence in the modern uh, phase contrast microscope we use camera uh, or uh, computer devices that can capture photos and video images also so in addition advances to the phase contrast microscope exceptionally uh, assess, 
especially those that incorporate technology enable a scientist to enhance minute internal uh, internal structures of a particle and can even detect a mere small number of protein molecules also so here in the end we have the application or uses of uh, phase contrast microscopy simply we uh, study the unstained living cell detailed examination of internal structure in living microorganism in their natural state uh, it is very effective to study flagellar movement and mortality of bacteria and protozoa also even to study the intestinal and other live protozoa such as amoeba and trichomonas it is very helpful to examine fungi grown in culture also so next we have the differential interference contrast microscopy and it is also known as a nomarsky interference contrast or nomarsky microscopy uh, basically it is an optical uh, microscopy technique that is used to enhance the contrast in unstained uh, and transparent sample so in a differential interference contrast microscopy uh, we use differences in refractive indexes so a uh, two beams of light are used instead of one and the modified prism split each light beam and adding contrasting colors to the specimen therefore the resolution of differential interference contrast microscope is higher than that of a standard phase contrast uh, contrast microscope in the figure given below the image is brightly colored as shown and appears nearly three dimensional uh, Initially, the current method of uh, differential interference uh, contrast microscopy is to work of uh, George George Nomarsky, who developed it in uh, 1960s. Actually, it is based on an older method of interferometry microscopy, in which a beam of light is split into two sending one beam through the specimen and the other through the same optical length path but without the specimen so the beams uh, were then recombined to produce an interference pattern so nomarsky was able to produce a modified uh, wallerstein prism that he could place directly in the back focal plane of high magnification so He altered the order, older method by using two beams of light that had a separation distance smaller than the resolution of the objective and the recombination of the two beams produce an enhanced image of the specimen uh, rather than an interference uh, pattern. So, so uh, in addition to the properties of uh, light, as we discussed in uh, phase contrast microscopy. The differential interference contrast microscopy also implies the polarization of light from the apparatus. So in this case we use two plane polarizer. One is used before the condenser and other is used after objective. So a modified prism basically act as a plane polarizer light first to split the beam into two and after that it recombine the beam two beams uh, when placed before the objective so here in this figure we have observed the different uh, component of uh, of uh, differential interference contrast microscope so actually uh, this is the apparatus of uh, dic uh, microscope here we have a polarizer or, or uh, that uh, receive the uh, light 
uh, from illuminator then we have a beam uh, separator basically that this beam separator act as a uh, prism modified prism then we have a condenser has in other microscope then we have the specimen uh, after this specimen uh, objective specimen then we again have a beam and combiner this is also a modified prism <coughs> that convert two beam of light into a single beam so this this one convert a single beam of light into two and this one convert two beam into one um, beam so after that we have analyzer and in the end we have the eyepiece we discuss all these uh, various uh, component uh, one by one in later in this presentation so here we have a schematic uh, diagram so this diagram actually uh, showing the major wavefront splitting optical components and the pathway in difference, differential interference contrast microscope. So here we have a light source illuminator from this <coughs> uh, has this uh, beam of light passing through this modified prism, DIC prism. This prism convert this single beam into two beams like this. After that we have a condenser has the condenser received these two beam lines it directly passes through the specimen from here and <clears throat> after passing through or transmit through this specimen here we have a objective lens when these two uh, beams passing through this objective lens here it produces different refractive indexes and ultimately by entering the another uh, modified prism so this prism uh, convert these two beam lines of different refractive index into a single beam here and this single beam is analyzed through an eyepiece or objective so here we have a very brief description of various components of uh, DIC microscope. Here we have, we have a polarizer. So polar, this produces a single beam of plain polarized light from the lamp only. After that we have a modified uh, uh, velocity prism. This produces two beams of uh, light polarized at a right angle to one another simply. So <clears throat> the amount uh, slightly out of phase with one another and having a very small amount of a shear so the amount of shear is on the order of the resolution of the objective so here we have a condenser so condenser focuses the two slightly shared beams or refractive beams on the specimen plane so the differential interference contrast microscope requires that the microscope be aligned for a color illumination uh, so this is a specific term uh, the color illumination that is used so here I clarify the two things here one is the shear beam the other one is color illumination the shear beam actually shear is the force in the beam that acting perpendicular to its longitudinal axis so uh, actually for design purposes the beams ability to resist shear force is more important and uh, <clears throat> the axial force is the force in the beam acting parallel to the longitudinal axis. So when the beam moves, uh, the on that beam there a force act upon it, and that force is called as a shear force. The other one is uh, color illumination. Basically, is a method uh, of specimen illumination used. Uh, for transmitted and reflected light uh, in optical microscopy. Basically, uh, color illumination acts to generate an even illumination of the sample and ensures that an image of the illum illumination source is not visible in the resulting image, simply. Next, we have a specimen. Uh, so the specimen causes a change in the optical path uh, 
difference between the two beams after that we have a uh, objective achromatic objective and uh, in uh, differential interference contrast microscopy the objective lens uh, must not affect the polarization of light so this can happen if the glass element of the lens have been subjected to the stresses that cause slight variation in the refractive indexes so it is very difficult to manufacture uh, apochromatic lens so that is strain free because of the large number of lens uh, elements so next we have uh, second modified valestance prism so this is a modified prism uh, placed above the objective lens so the location of the interference uh, fringes of this valestance uh, prism must coincide the back focal plane of the objective so the back focal plane of the middle and the high power objective is inside the objective basically so after that we have analyzer uh, this is the second polarizer placed after the second modified uh, velastron prism so this uh, polarizer had its major transmission axis at right angle to the lower uh, polarizer so in that we have eyes piece the interference of the two modified beams occur in uh, in the intermediate image plane forming a real image so that is further magnified by the eyepiece this is a configuration of differential interference contrast microscope uh, and uh, this model is the lumpus digital bx61 motorized fluorescence and fluorescence microscope dic microscope as you observe in this figure so here we have advantages of uh, DIC microscope. So the specimen that would be suitable for phase contrast microscopy are also suitable for uh, differential interference uh, contrast microscope. Uh, in uh, DIC, the specimen will appear bright in contrast to the dark background. So we uh, one can easily uh, view the uh, specimen. So. And this uh, microscopy produces very clear images of relatively thick specimens that does not uh, uh, produce by phase contrast microscope. And in addition to this, uh, uh, no halo effects uh, occur when uh, we use the IC microscope. And it can be used to produce a very clear image of uh, thick specimens. One of the major uh, advantage of uh, differential interference contracts uh, microscope uh, is uh, examining living specimens when normal biological process mi might be uh, engaged by normal uh, staining procedures. And it, it is also very effective in uh, uh, different types uh, of uh, studies like cytolo uh, cytological, histological, microbial, microbiological and cell culture specimens. And uh, DIC microscope uh, uh, Im uh, imaging can be used in conjunction with the fluorescence microscopy to provide a better fluorescence image and to pinpoint specific areas of a specimen uh, before switching to the fluorescence mode to further examine the object so it uh, the use of DIC especially in fluorescence or uh, focal microscopy indicates the morphological aspects of fluorescent region very easily so the ultra structured uh, features of cell uh, such as microtubules and cytoplasmic granules can easily be uh, vis uh, visible through DIC uh, when when this uh, microscopy enhanced with video techniques, so uh, it uh, enables us to visualize this, uh, 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 various uh, structures like actin that are actually below the resolution of the microscope. Similarly, in the end, uh, DIC used with stained or unstained uh, specimen and 
then it can provide additional uh, useful information so these are the figures uh, that uh, is the result of DIC microscopy so these are the very clear and very uh, opaque uh, vision of specimen so this is all uh, due to DIC microscope so here we have the references that we get from different sources this is all about for uh, this lecture I hope you get a very good illustration of this lecture stay safe and healthy Allah Hafiz.